Hello everyone, it's Livid here with a brand new November update inside of Grounded. There are a ton of fixes and a ton of new content for players to explore in the backyard, with all of it centered around our favorite water feature. So grab your new slime lanterns as we explore the depths of the pond. So probably the biggest thing staring everyone in the face is the total overhaul that the pond received. It just looks so fantastic now, covered in lily pads clearly meant to help the player both traverse above it and even construct bases on top of it. There are also bull rushes, underwater plants, a cool pond statue that even the crow enjoys, and a much murkier atmosphere. And the elephant in the room, or should I say the pond, the koi fish. Now, a large body of water wouldn't be appropriate in a survival game without clearly having something trying to kill you at all times. This is where the koi fish comes in. Once you agitate it or even get within its aggro radius, which I'm honestly still not sure where that limit actually is, this thing will audibly get aggravated and decide you are the next thing on the menu for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Now, this unfortunately isn't a creature you can simply kill, like most of your problems. Avoiding it is key you'll need to go into the water for a plethora of resources, even including the koi fish's own scales. The upside to these, however, are that you will thankfully not have to directly interact with the fish for them. We'll talk about how to get them in a little bit, but you will need these for the brand new armor set. Now, the koi armor set, it's an interesting set that strangely doesn't really help you traverse the water environment any better. In fact, it oddly helps you to improve your perfect block and is a more effective armor set on land. Which is even weirder considering it has lower defense than that of the ladybug armor. Now, the perfect block of the set also gives you a damage buff when attacking out of it, almost like a riposte. So that's kind of a cool function for the set. In terms of actually getting around the new water environment, no extra oxygen capacity and no swim speed increase. It's quite an odd set. If you want to actually traverse the new watery environment better, then don't worry there are more gear pieces that will help to do that. The gill tube is one of them, a nifty little underwater device that takes up your helmet slot and will grant you up to 80 seconds of oxygen while in the water. Now this is extremely accessible starting out and only costs two lily pad wax, four eelgrass strands, and two silk ropes. The bubble helmet on the other hand, which looks like a crude version of the koi helmet, is vastly superior and will actually grant you a whopping 160 seconds of air that's more than enough to do some serious exploring in the pond. Now the downside is this item will be much more challenging to get due to the fact that on top of four eelgrass strands and four silk rope, you will also be required to procure five sunken bones. Now you're probably like, whoa, 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 that's a lot of new resources already, slow down. And you'd be right. I think it's important we take a step back and look at the resources you will get from the new pond biome, whether it be from the new flora or fauna within. Now let's start from the top and work our way down. Right at the surface, you will be able to find yourselves lily pads just about everywhere. Not only can these function as both a way across the water and a buildable surface, but beneath them, they have these little globules of lily pad wax that all you need to do is simply harvest it with your hand. Lily pad wax is used in just about everything in this new update, so you'll want to stock up on it, and it makes a good introduction to getting in the water. Now, before we go any further to getting resources, you're gonna need to craft yourself the pebblet deck. It's really cheap, will utilize the lily pad wax you just gathered, and will allow you to both harvest resources and defend yourself in this new environment. Now, if you're lucky, you'll spot one of the new insects in this update, the water boatman. Hanging around at various depths of the pond, but can commonly be found swimming up towards the surface. You are going to want to kill a couple of these as soon as possible. Not only can you make a new food consumable out of them, the boatman fin soup, but they are also essential for crafting fin flops specialized hydrodynamic footwear. They're diving fins. These bad boys will make you go from navigating the water at a snail's pace to speedboat level. These are essential for making the most out of your air supply and avoiding threats more easily. And unfortunately, these also require eelgrass strands to craft. Now remember that pebblet dagger we had you craft? Well, dive a little further down into the water and you'll come across wavy eelgrass all over the bottom of the pond. You'll likely have to make a few trips due to the limited air supply, but trust me, it's worth it. All in all, you should shoot for around six strands to start out, which is kind of only like one strand when you cut it. Obviously, if you can get more, do it as you'll need this resource for a lot more things going forward. 
Now with your eelgrass secured, water boatman fins, and lily pad wax ready to go, it's time to get yourself suited for more advanced diving maneuvers. Not only will you be able to craft those stylish fin flops, but you'll also be able to craft the gill tube, essentially a rebreather that extends your oxygen levels all the way up to 80 seconds. Look at you, you James Bond of the pond. Now, there are some other things in the pond you should be aware of before we get into any more prep, which includes several other new creatures, not all of them friendly. Scattered throughout the pond, you'll see what appears to be orbs of silk. Now these contain limited air pockets that you can use to refresh your oxygen in a pinch. But as we all know, where there's spider silk, there's spiders. The new diving bell spiders are an agile little pest that will pursue just about anything in its vicinity. And that includes the other adorable little <clears throat> amphibians, Kodiak, that lives in the pond. Tadpoles. These little lads aren't hostile at all to you, but they are abundant. Now the main reason for their abundance is that in combination with a little bit of eelgrass and some water flea meat, this new tadpole meat can be crafted into decoy bait, an awesome little tool to distract large predators like the koi fish so you can go about your business. Now, I've personally found that the koi fish in question isn't that hard to avoid, but if any of you really get jumpy with large creatures in bodies of water, you might want to craft yourself a little bit of this just in case. A neat little detail that the developer snuck in is that to make managing your oxygen supply levels during precarious combat situations more forgiving, every time you kill something in the water, an explosion of bubbles will occur to help refill your oxygen meter. And that means even killing the adorable tadpoles. And of course, if you find yourself living around this area for a long period of time, you can make use of all this tadpole meat by cooking it for a decent amount of restoration to your hunger meter. With that information out of the way, there is one more item you need before you can descend into the depths of the pond with max efficiency, an acorn shovel. Now the reason you need this tool is to gather the other two brand new resources that only lie within the deepest parts of the pond, the koi scale and the fish bone. Both of these are critical in crafting the best gear the pond has to offer. As you venture further down, you might also be worried about drowning while deep beneath the water surface. But I do actually have a really cool trick for you. Now the hole that leads to the chamber containing the dinosaur statue is your way into the depths. And if you notice, right in front of it, large bubbles periodically form and float up. These are infinitely spawning, and shredding water right in their path will completely restore your oxygen level. Meaning you can use this area as a staging ground for most resource operations the pond has to offer. Now once you're comfortable with your infinite air supply, take a look around this whole area down here. You'll see harvestable points called muddy scales and sunken bones. Simply use your shovel to unearth the koi scales and fish bones you have been after. The reason we want these two resources is because first off, we can craft the new koi scale armor set. Is it good? Doesn't really seem that great, but it does make you look cool as hell. So this set will set you back 5 sunken bone, 10 koi scales, 7 eelgrass, 7 lily pad wax, and 3 silk rope if you want the entire set. The reason I say if you want the entire set is because there is another headpiece item, the bubble helmet that I mentioned earlier, that will grant you a massive 180 seconds of oxygen underwater, and the main item you need to really explore the depths of the pond to the fullest extent. This item will set you back four eelgrass strands, five more sunken bones, and four silk rope. All in all, you'll probably only be wearing the bubble helmet, maybe the koi chest piece, and the fin flops, so plan accordingly. Using that area as a staging ground, if you can manage to harvest 10 sunken bones and 10 koi scales, you will be able to craft all of that in one go, allowing you to be well equipped to take on just about anything the pond has to offer. And there are still even more recipes we haven't talked about yet. The bone dagger is a direct upgrade to the pebblet dagger and does significantly more damage to enemies, making it the logical next upgrade for underwater exploration. It won't actually cost you that much either. Two sunken bones, two silk rope, and one diving bell spider chunk. Pretty cheap for a solid upgrade. Now then we come to the big weapon of this update, the bone trident. Ever wanted to be Poseidon? Well, now you kind of can inside of a small little pond area. For three sunken bones, two diving bell spider chunks, and three eelgrass strands, this weapon hits surprisingly hard and is quite cheap to produce, making it now one of my go-to weapons in the game. It helps to put you almost completely at ease in the watery environment. Now, once you have your bubble helmet, fin flops, a shovel, and your pebblet dagger, you're all set to explore past the wreck statue, right? 
What if I told you that you could be even more prepared? If you are at all worried about still running out of air underwater, you better believe we can boost that oxygen meter even higher. I'm not really sure how I got this mutation, but it's called Mertine, and it may just have been from spending too much time in the water. This mutation appears to grant roughly 12.5% additional oxygen to your reserves, meaning this scales with your gear. So with no gear on, you're only looking at 5 extra oxygen. With the gill tube, 10 extra oxygen. And with that bubble helmet, oh man, 20 extra oxygen, putting you at a whopping 180 oxygen. You better believe we still aren't done yet. Back at the smoothie station, we can now make liquid gill smoothies for one eelgrass, one raw tadpole meat, and one raw water flea meat. This smoothie, when combined with the bubble helmet, adds another 42 oxygen, bringing you up to 222 total oxygen. If you drown underwater at this point, it's honestly your fault and you should feel bad. So now once we are all prepared, whether you did all these extra steps or not, we are ready to dive deeper into the pond. And be warned, these are almost certainly spoilers ahead. Here, you'll find a long corridor of pond lights, underwater currents to boost your speed, and several switches you'll need to turn on to gain access to the new laboratory area of the pond. Inside, the only thing of real note resides at the very top, a switch to open the glass dome and observe the pond from your dry viewing deck. Now, before you leave here, however, make sure you look at the desk chair right here. On its cushion, sits the Pond Burgle chip. If you take this back to Burgle, he will have, in my opinion, one of the best additions to the game in this update, for only 2,000 science. Buoy bases. That's right, with these, you can build completely floating bases on the water. The only downside is, you're going to be farming a ton of berry leather in the future to make these platforms happen. Friends, this update is exceptional, and there's still secrets to be discovered. We knew about it for some time, but it's finally here now. New creatures, new structures, new items, new resources, and new things to explore. It has it all. So what are you waiting for? Load up the game and head out for a swim. Now before you go, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We cover every bit of Grounded each and every update, so don't miss out. My name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.